Hey Deckers, the Command & Conquer Classic Collection got dropped on us and pretty much all of them work fine on Steam Deck. However, a few of them do have some quirks. I've tested every single one out, so let's run through them in release order and see what it's all about. Starting with the original Command & Conquer, everything is working out of the gate on this one. No need for compatibility or other changes. Running it around 13 watts on the OLED. Frame time seems to be a bit all over the place like a lot of these ones do, but the frame rate is uncapped, so you will get 40 to 60 frames per second. It does seem hugely dependent on what's going on on the screen to what the frame counter says, so I would just turn it off for pretty much all of these games, as you're not going to have any issues with running them. As you can see, the main gameplay works perfectly fine, and you will need to do some remapping of controls for pretty much every single one of these, and we'll work on a guide for that separately because every game is a little bit different, but we'll find a good balance in between. Using the trackpad mouse though, will get you through most of the games. Next up is Command & Conquer Red Alert. No need for compatibility or any other changes for this one either. Running perfectly fine out of the box. However, you do get a warning about low disk space when you start this one up. You can just say yes, and you will still have plenty of space to save your games. This is one of the first games that introduced Tanya. The Red Alert series is just fantastic. And you see that we get a solid 15 frames per second for the cutscenes on this one, and it's not that much different going forwards. Although when we get into the gameplay, surprisingly this one is also uncapped, so you get around 50 to 60 frames per second. But again, the frame time doesn't look great, but you won't notice that stutter in game. There's no graphic settings in these ones, it just runs at 800 by 600, so you'll get what you're given. Otherwise though, it's perfectly playable. Again, you'll need to do some remapping. Scrolling around is a bit over the top, so you really do want to add some pan controls to the mappings, because scrolling around is very difficult, and you really do have to admire the quality back then. Next up, we have Command & Conquer, Tiberian Sun, and Firestorm. You need a special DLL and override on this, and I'll cover that at the end of this video. You don't actually need the compatibility layer for this one, but it does help. You'll know that you'll need this, because when you come into game, if you try and open that menu, it will be black. So without that tweak, you won't be able to use the menus. Otherwise, once you've got it up and running, this actually runs at a solid 60 frames per second and runs incredibly smooth. Again, capped at 800 by 600, you're not going to be able to change much of the graphic settings on this, but it does work perfectly fine. Red Alert 2 and Yuri's Revenge also requires the DLL fix for black menus. They must be using a very similar engine. Skip to the end of this video if you want a guide to install this. Both Red Alert 2 and Yuri's Revenge play exactly the same. If you set this to 1024 resolution, it will give you a black box in the middle of the screen here. So I do recommend keeping this one at 800 by 600 and on the high detail. And once again, it runs at a perfectly solid 60 frames per second. Once you've got that DLL fix in place for the black menus. One of the most iconic Command & Conquers it also brings in some of Decent video footage as well in between games and during games. So definitely one of the best of the series. Even with tons of units on the screen and attacking bases, they were around 6 watts. So you would actually get around 9 to 10 hours gameplay if you're playing Red Alert 2 or Yuri's Revenge or even both of them going forwards. So it's a great one to dive into. The video cutscenes in these are also fantastic. So be sure to dive in on Red Alert 2 if you haven't played through on this one. Definitely a great one to even start off the series if you don't want to go all the way back to the beginning. Command & Conquer Renegade is up next, no tweaks needed for this one, and the first and only first person shooter version of the Command & Conquer series, or third person shooter should I say. Video settings, you've got full 1280 by 800 support and full 32 cut bit colour depth, and you can crank everything up to the max even with antistopic filtering, and you'll get around 120 frames per second if you are on an external monitor, so you can get a full 60 on the LCD or 90 on the OLED, and you can switch between that first person and third person modes. There isn't a decent mapping straight out the box, but there is a community mapping for Renegade. If you go to the search tab, not the first one, you wanna go down to the Command & Conquer Renegade keyboard and mouse mapping, and make sure that R4 is on the E key, and this will get you for the most part. Although the left trackpad is not mapped for the movement for some reason, so you will want to re-add that or create your own mapping as required. Overall though, it is a solid game on the Steam Deck, so if you do want a bit of nostalgia, then Renegade runs perfectly fine. Command & Conquer Generals is up next. No tweaks needed, however, you will get stuck on the screen if you're not careful because for some reason you actually need to tap or press for the menu to appear on this one. 
So although it looks like it's not doing anything, it's actually just waiting for input. You can put this one to 1024x768 in high detail, get a little bit extra quality in that boxed view. However, the cutscenes and a lot of other scenes are capped at 20 frames per second, so don't worry about that too much. You're only going to notice really if you actually have the frame counter up anyway. And there's quite a lot of little cutscenes and bits and pieces in this one. Generals brings in a whole host of new abilities and changes to the CNC universe, so it's definitely another iconic entry. Although this does also start the 30 cap measures on a lot of these games. So you can see moving around, it is capped at 30 frames per second, although it bounces between 28 and 31 occasionally. You won't really notice it that much. And around 15 watt power draw on the OLED. So you get a good three to four hours playtime easy. Final Conquer General Zero Hour is the same engine. So same issue with the menu screen. Make sure you tap, otherwise you'll get stuck there for a little while. And again, the same settings as it's exactly the same. Essentially DLC before DLC existed because it's exactly the same engine with a bit of different gameplay. On to Command Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars, the start of my favourites in this series. Really upped the quality of not only the game but also the cutscenes and other bits and pieces introducing some actors you might even recognise. You can easily dial this one up to 1280x800. Full ultra settings and you can also put up the antiscopic filtering as well. Again, capped at 30 frames per second, but you won't really notice that much, especially with everything going on. You will need to remap the controls though, especially to the 1, 2, 3, 4 buttons, as well as some of the attack move and other commands, especially as this introduces quite a lot more of the specialist units and abilities within those. I think you put F on a lot of those units, so you do want to be able to map those controls so you can really get the most out of all of the tactics. You may well recognize some of the actors in the cutscenes and also some of the others in the campaign modes that talk to you during the games as they have gone on to much bigger and greater things. Bonus points in the comments if you can let us know where you've seen them. Command & Conquer 3 Kings Wrath is just the same engine as Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars, essentially another DLC, so it runs perfectly fine with the same settings out of the box. And this one I did dial up the antisopic filtering to 8 times, so you can see just the difference and how clear this is. Just to note that you have to change the resolution and the quality settings differently, otherwise only one of them applies. So bear that in mind when making the adjustments to those settings. With the anti-aliasing at 8 times, it looks incredibly smooth on the screen and still only runs around 13 watts on the OLED, giving you a good 4 to 5 hours playtime. And still keeping that quality in the FMVs, although the FMVs run at 50 frames per second, so you do get a bit of a smoother playback. Red Alert 3 continues the trend of keeping it 1280x800 and ultra settings, and also marks another shift in the game's franchise of different campaign modes. The standard Red Alert 3 modes running fantastically well, again, with some high quality audio and video as well thrown in, but a very big change in the way bases are constructed and also introducing a new faction, it really does give a different play in the game. Still capped at 30 frames per second though and around 14 watts on this one, so slowly creeping up on that TDP, but still getting a good 4 hours plus on the OLED deck. Red Alert 3 Uprising is the same settings again, but also introduces another new campaign type for the Psychic route, giving a very different playthrough again, and a great way to continue the Red Alert franchise. Still capped at 30 frames per second with the TDP around 13 watts, so you're not going to have any major problems still, but it will take you a bit of getting used to if you run through that campaign. Command & Conquer 4 is the only one that's officially unsupported before it was added to this bundle. However, if you do change to the GE Proton, I was using GE Proton 830 for this testing. I haven't tried 9.1 yet, but let us know in the comments below if that does also work. You do also need to accept the ULEF agreement, and if you put in your email address and password and this crashes, then you do need to try it in different of those protons. Now, very annoyingly, you have to enter this twice, and I'm not entirely sure why. This is actually your EA account that you have to log into to even start the game, but after it does a loading sequence, it asks you to log in again, and I'm not entirely sure why. Again, this is your EA account, not a specific CNC4 account, but once you've logged in, it does seem fully functional under that GE Proton. So if you need help on how to get that GE Proton installed, there is a link in the description below of how to install those. But once it's up and running, again, we can run it at 1280x800, full level three anti-aliasing and ultra high settings all round, but be sure to disable VSync as the deck handles that just fine. In game, you'll be back to 30 frames per second and around the 13 watt power mark still. 
so no issues playing this one. Not people's favourites of the Command & Conquer series, but if you do want to tie out the list, then Command & Conquer 4 can be played on the Steam Deck as well. Let us know in the comments below which is your favourite, and stick around if you want the fixes for Red Alert 2 and Tiberium Sun. For the black menu fixes, especially for Red Alert 2, then you need to go into desktop mode and open up a web browser and you want to search for cnc hyphen draw i'll put links directly to the githubs in here as well and you want the top version which is the funky fresh cnc draw and then just hit the download cnc draw dot zip from the top of the file here they've even updated it fairly recently as i've already downloaded this i won't download it again but once you've downloaded it you want to open up your library and for whichever game that you want to install this for so either the tiberian sun and firestorm or red alert 2 and i'm going to do it for red alert 2 here so you click on red alert 2 and then either right click and say manage browse local files or do it from the settings cog on the right hand side that should open up the game folder and you want to go to your downloads file and open up cnc draw.zip and then just drag and drop the two dd draw files you don't need the others there so just drag those two over and hit overwrite and then in your properties for the game you want to go in and set the command line argument so go to the game and hit settings cog and properties and then under general in the advanced users may choose to enter modifications to their launch options enter this text here and i'll put it in the comments below or in the part of the guide that will attach as well that you can copy and paste that in or just copy it by hand. That's it. Once these two are in place, you will be able to play these games without the black screen menu issues and enjoy your time on the Steam Deck. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.